Today on the show, we're gonna be talking about the documentary about the most influential film that never was, Jodorowsky's Dune, and we're also gonna be talking about Alejandro Jodorowsky's comic book universe. What's Dune? Well, robot. Frank Herbert's Dune is only the best-selling science fiction novel in the world, and I reference it like all the time on the show, and it's like a huge influence on me, but whatever. Why are we talking about books so much on this show? If a book was any good, it would have already been a movie, and I already have seen it. Well, Robot, I'll have you know that Dune was turned into a movie. It was adapted by David Lynch, and also it was turned into a mini-series by the Sci-Fi Channel, but the problem is, is that both of these adaptations have failed to live up to the source material because in David Lynch's version, you can't fit Dune into two hours. It's just not gonna happen, okay? It's like making Game of Thrones into two hours. It's just, it's crazy. And then on Sci-Fi Channel's problem was that it was just cheap. It was just, it looked really cheap. They had a lot of the stuff from the books in there, like all of it, but it just looked like crap. So it also failed to hit the mark in my opinion. As I was saying, to adapt Dune into a movie is like super nuts. And whoever does it is gonna have to interpret the story in their own way. And I feel like the person who could have interpreted Dune in the most awesome and weirdest way would definitely have been the man who tried to make it in 1975, Alejandro Jodorowsky. Hence today, we're gonna talk about the documentary that chronicles the epic conception and dissolution of the greatest film never made, Jodorowsky's Dune. Who's a Jujo Jodorowsky? Well, Alejandro Jodorowsky is a man of many talents. He has many, many things, but let's just focus on him as a film director for the time being. And in the early 70s, he attempted to make the most ambitious, craziest science fiction movie of all time. He was trying to rival 2001. He was trying to top in fact, 2001. And it was so out there and so ambitious that the studios just didn't understand it. And as a result, the production got shut down after he'd been working on the film for years, okay, with a bunch of other artists. And this movie was so ahead of its time that had it been made, it would have changed the course of cinema history. And according to the man himself, it would have changed the world by causing a paradigm shift in consciousness. Oh, so what it would have been like Commando, right? Yeah, just like Commando. You remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? That's right, Major, you did. I lied. And in the documentary, you follow Jodo as he recounts how he assembled one of like the greatest and most talented group of artists of all time to help him produce this film, okay? Listen to some of the talent working here. First of all, you have Jean Girard, otherwise known as Mobius, doing all of the storyboards and character designs. You have Chris Foss doing all of the spaceship designs. And then he approached H.R. Giger for the first time ever to do anything. He was supposed to be working on the Harkonnen designs. As for the musical talent, he had enlisted Pink Floyd and Tangerine Dream, among others. And the acting talent is even more ridiculous than those guys, okay? You had Orson Welles, who was set to play the Baron, Salvador Dali as the Emperor, and David Carradine as Leto Atreides. I mean, like, mind blown. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And it's so fascinating hearing him talk about how he assembled this team of spiritual warriors. And that's the thing, he called them his spiritual warriors because he was looking for like artists that had this mystical quality about them that were like perfect for this, okay? And he would go and meet these people and individually hand pick them because they had that quality he was looking for. And under his direction, they produced some of the most influential movie concept art of all time that never was. And it's so great in the film because you learn about how this artwork has influenced some of the biggest science fiction movies of all time, such as Alien, The Fifth Element, Contact, and even Star Wars. And side note, John Gerard, otherwise known as Mobius, is one of the biggest, most influential comic book artists of all time. Robot, you should know who he is. He even inspired some of those 90s guys that you love so much, including Jim Lee. What? And maybe one day, 
We can do a whole episode on just him because he deserves it. I don't know if people know what's up. And I really appreciate Jodorowsky's Dune because the filmmaker Frank Pavich had the foresight to do this while Alejandro Jodorowsky is still alive, okay? Because the dude's like 84 years old, although he totally doesn't look it. He's like so spry and like filled with life, it's crazy. But anyways, it's such a delight to see him tell this heartbreaking tale of how he fell in love with the idea of doing this movie and then how he did all this work for it and then how it all fell apart and how he had to go see the Lynch version and all this crazy stuff. And even more than seeing him talk about it, it's also a delight to see the artist talk about him because there's even interviews with H.R. Giger in there, there's interviews with Chris Voss, and their stories about him are just hilarious and ridiculous and man, I wish I could go back in time and just party with those dudes because they were awesome. You're a little bit too excited today. I know. I, I've been meaning to talk about this dude for a long time and like, uh, he's like my cosmic godfather or something. I don't know. This is unbecoming. Unbecoming. I know. I got, I don't know. I think he's great. He's my favorite. It's just so heartbreaking when you find out that the reason this movie didn't get made was because it just couldn't secure the last little bit of funding, you know? Why? If the movie was gonna be so good, well, the studio should have given them a billion dollars, huh? Well, they should have, but I think that they didn't because he came to them with this giant book and everything was ready to go, and the studios just didn't have any involvement with them. He just came to them just to get the money. Mais on comprend pas que le metteur, votre metteur en scène. And the thing is, is money people don't want to just feel like money people. They want to feel like they're really creative and have their little inputs. And since he wasn't giving that to them, they turned him down. And it's just fucking ridiculous that this amazing, mind-blowing, ridiculous, crazy film did not get made because of stupid money. You gotta be shitting me. And in the movie, you can just see how heartbroken he was, like just the look on his face. It, it looks so fresh, like it just happened yesterday. And it's just so sad. Like I got depressed for a few days, like after watching it, to be honest. But the thing that's really interesting about this whole experience was even though he didn't get to make the movie that he wanted to make, he transmuted that pain and turned himself into a comic book writer to take all these crazy concepts he had and put those into his own original comic books. That's awesome. So yeah, all those amazing concepts that were supposed to be in this movie ended up in all these crazy comic books, which ended up creating its own fictional universe called the Johtoverse. And if you're interested in dipping your little toesies in the Johtoverse pool, I recommend highly picking up the Inkle. Uh, it was illustrated by Mobius and it's just gorgeous and one of the most ripped off books of all time. More Johtoverse comics include the Techno Priests and also the Meta Barons. But today I want to focus on talking about the Meta Barons. I feel like this is the one that's the most inspired by Dune. There's a lot of influences in here. And if you're really into that sort of stuff, you will totally love this, okay? And the Meta Barons is all about the fascinating lineage of the universe's ultimate warrior. You learn how the Meta Barons got all their fucking wealth. You learn about why they have cybernetic implants, why they all have to kill their fathers in Mortal Kombat before they inherit the title of Meta Baron. It's totally insane. And the thing that I love even more about the Meta Barons is the fact that it goes back even further. Humanoids just put out Meta Baron's Genesis Kastaka, which goes even further back, and it talks about the ancestors of the ancestors of the Meta Barons, starting with Dial de Kastaka, and man, it's even crazier, okay? Like, I don't, I don't even know where he gets all this stuff from. It just keeps coming out of him, and I keep reading it and loving it, so. And just like how Jodorowsky somehow assembles the greatest team of artists ever to work on Dune, he also gets like the greatest artist to work on his comics. Like seriously, every single comic that he writes, I can fucking guarantee you the art is amazing, okay? It's just like, I don't know how he does it, but he does it and I love it. Whoa, why did this guy's feet just detach and then he could fly because his feet were detached? This doesn't make any sense. All right, well, the reason he can fly is because, you know, these bitches like were trying to kill his mom and then her dad shot him with an anti-gravity dart while she was still pregnant and then it got in the embryonic sac so that now the baby can fly all the time. But because of that, 
later on, like he had to prove to his father that he could be the ultimate warrior even though he was weightless. So he allowed himself to have his feet completely crushed by this machine just to show his dad that he couldn't feel any pain and that he was fucking badass. So that's why he doesn't have any feet anymore. But now he has metal feet which can help him not float so much. So it kind of worked out. Oh, okay, that old thing. Yeah, that's just a tiny taste. Just a tiny taste of what's in store for you uh, if you read these comic books. So if you want to pick up some Jodorowsky comic books, you should head on over to Humanoids Incorporated. They are the only people who publish this stuff. They publish a lot of French comics and man, they just have like the, the finest selection. Like it's incredible the comic books they have. So if you want to start getting into more European stuff, a little bit more pricey stuff, a little bit more collector stuff, check out Humanoids for real. Like they got the goods. And as I stated earlier, I can talk about this stuff for like a million years, but we can't do that right now. So we're gonna talk more about Jodorowsky's Dune and more about his comic books in the upcoming Plopcast number 20. So be on the lookout. Marvelous. And to celebrate 420, let's talk about the marijuana reform that's sweeping the nation. As you all know, Colorado, it's legal. But in California, it's still a medical marijuana situation, but I think that's gonna change pretty soon. Uh, but I finally found someone that I love, LA Flower Company, and they're all delivery. That's the best part. You don't have to leave your house. They come to you. And the deal is with these guys is that they have a very small amount of products, but they're very hand-picked and they're very nice products. So if you're a medical marijuana patient in the LA area, be sure to check out laflowercompany.com. And while you're at it, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. And big ups to Black Milk Clothing for giving me this amazing Poison Ivy bathing suit. That's wild, man. That's wild.